Herodotus was born in Halicarnassus, a Greek colony in Asia Minor. Scholars put his dates from around 484 to 425 BC. He's generally said to be the first historian, but this claim requires some qualification. There were presumably other historians before him, such as Hecateus of Miletus, whom he mentions, but their works survive only in fragments, and it's unclear to what extent their writings are emancipated from mythological accounts. Our modern word history comes from his work, which is simply called historia, meaning an inquiry into something. The histories tells the story of the Persian Wars, which were fought between a coalition of Greek city-states and the mighty Persian Empire. Only the most general information is known about the life of Herodotus. In 454 BC, he was exiled from Halicarnassus by the tyrant Lugdamus. He probably went first to Samos and then on to Athens. In 443 BC, he set out with the Athenian colonists to a new city-state in Thuria in Italy. He traveled extensively to Babylonia, Egypt, and Phoenicia, although exactly when and in what order is uncertain. His histories were apparently written in Athens, and he used his travels to do research for the work. It's clear that he experienced at least the initial years of the Peloponnesian War, but the exact date of his death is a matter of speculation. The Persian Wars that Herodotus relates are a series of conflicts that took place in the first half of the 5th century BC and lasted for more than 50 years. From early times, the Greeks sent out colonists throughout the Mediterranean, and many of them settled along the coast of Asia Minor. With the growth and expansion of the Persian Empire, these Greek colonies were conquered and became subject to the Persians. Beginning in 499 BC, some of these Greek cities rebelled in what is known as the Ionian Revolt. In their efforts to break free from Persia, they sought and received assistance from some of the other Greek states such as Athens. With their help, the Ionians captured the Persian city of Sardis, the regional capital of Lydia. After suppressing the rebellion, the Persians made two major expeditions to Greece in order to exact revenge against Athens and the European Greeks for helping the Ionians. The first of these, led by Darius, was stopped by the Athenians at the Battle of Marathon. The second expedition was defeated after a series of armed conflicts, the most famous of which were the Battle of Thermopylae, where a small group of Spartans held the Persians at bay, the Sea Battle at Salamis, and finally, the decisive Battle of Plataea. In his narr narrative of these events, Herodotus' goal is to portray Athens as the moral leader and hero of the Greek city-states, standing up against foreign aggression. He says, quote, anyone who proclaims the Athenians the saviors of Greece would hardly be far from the truth. So it, it's a valorous story about the virtues of Greek democracy and freedom against Persian absolutism and oppression. Moreover, Herodotus is keen to portray the brave Greeks as being small and vulnerable against the overwhelming forces of the Persians, whose march westward seems unstoppable. He takes pleasure in recounting all of the many different peoples drawn from the vast reaches of the empire who made up the seemingly invincible Persian army. The description of the Athenian victory at Marathon is intended to play to the Athenian sense of national pride. It's a celebration of national values. The Athenians are great warriors since they are free men fighting for their own interests and are not subject to the arbitrary will of a king. By contrast, the Spartans and the Corinthians are treated less sympathetically. Herodotus' portrayal of Athens has had an enormous influence on later interpretation of Greek history. While the story of the Persian Wars is what he's best known for, his work contains much more than this and is in part known for its digressions. In fact, only with Book 5 does his narration of the actual conflict begin. Book 2 is primarily about Egypt, and although criticized for inaccuracies, it represents our main source of information from this period about the ancient Egyptians. Similarly, in another digression, he tells the story of the rise of the Persian Empire and its different peoples who were unified under Cyrus the Great. Herodotus was well-traveled in Persia and visited many cities, including Babylon. He is thus also our main ancient source of information about Persian history and the different peoples that made up their vast empire. Herodotus was well-placed to explain Persian customs and practices to the Greeks since 
Halicarnassus was a part of the Persian Empire, and he himself was born a subject of the Persian king. While he's keen to contrast Persian life to that of the Greeks in his portrayal of the Persians, he's generally sympathetic, just as Homer portrays both the Trojans and the Greeks in a positive light. Moreover, Herodotus shows an interest in Persian affairs for their own sake, long before they were in conflict with the Greeks. The digressions and other perceived discontinuities have given rise to arguments about the unity of Herodotus' text. These have divided scholars into two camps. Those who believe the text to be the unified work that Herodotus wrote from beginning to end with a single guiding idea, and those who believe that it was written in a piecemeal manner, with certain passages and elements being added, deleted, and rearranged over a long period of time, such that the final result cannot be rightly called a unified text, but instead contains a number of different and even contradictory strands. Although there's no question of various authors being involved in the composition of the work, the arguments follow some of the general lines of the discussions in Homer textual criticism that we discussed before. Indeed, they even borrow the nomenclature from that field, talking of the Unitarian and the analytic approaches. While it's said that Herodotus is the founder of history as a field, he can also be regarded as the founder of other disciplines, such as ethnography and cultural anthropology, as well as being an important pioneer in the field of geography. He has a genuine curiosity about other peoples and spends much time and effort researching them. For whatever his shortcomings, there can be no doubt that Herodotus was an important and influential figure in many different spheres.